do I, do I really deserve this? And it's like, the more I thought about it, I was like, actually, no, I do. And I shouldn't enjoy it and I should embrace it. But like, mm -hmm. for the most part, it's like, just get off your phone, man. Yeah. Just be present with the people that you're around. We're going to surprise you if there was a game seven and go out there. And then we looked at the ticket prices and we're like, oh, <laughs> maybe we'll just text him. <laughs> off, 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 off. The pill. You too? Yeah. Good. All right. Welcome back to another episode of Off the Pill Podcast. Hi. Oh, you're rusty, dude. You forgot. <laughs> Sound. Wait, why is it so? You're rusty, man. And it's okay. We'll save it for later. We're here <laughs> with a very special, and we're surprised, actually, a surprise guest, Mr. Jeremy Lin, NBA champion. Uh, timing's getting better. Shoot. So, um... <laughs> Jeremy was just in town literally for like this is gonna be this might end up being a short one, but you're only here for like another couple hours. Yeah. <clears throat> this is a surprise visit. I didn't know. You didn't even know you were gonna be here. I didn't even know. I literally just found out and I was like, Ryan, I'm coming to Vegas. Tell him tell him why for people who are living under a rock. Um I play for the Toronto Raptors and we were just playing. We just finished in game six against the Warriors in San Francisco. And we were scheduled to fly back the next morning. And then because we won the, the NBA finals, um, out of nowhere, they're like, all right, well, we're going to Vegas for a night. And so. Is that how it usually is, though? Like, you guys are just, I always thought it was, like, super, like, to a point. Like, from this 315 to 317, you're doing interviews and then, you know. It is and it isn't. I feel like because there's so many variables, it's, it is super flexible. And, I mean, that's the one crazy thing is, like, I feel like because no one knows if we're going to win or lose, yeah, all the plans are like so up in the air. Uh -huh. I mean, they were game five. They had. I was going to ask you. I don't know. Can, can you bring that up? Can yeah. Talk? Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. In game five, they had the trophy and the champagne and everything like being carted. And and because we were up six with three minutes left and then the Warriors scored nine straight and they had to like take down all the, you know, all the celebrations and you know, bring the trophy back in. And then right. again, it's just, everything's on the fly. Cause you don't know what's going to happen in the games. And so after we won, they were just like, we're going to Vegas for a night. And then <laughs> we're going to go Dude. to Toronto after that. But did, I mean, like speaking on that, that's crazy to me. That's like, I mean, that's like insult to injury a little bit. Right. Cause you got, I mean, that game for people who don't, who didn't see it was like, everybody thought it was over. Like it, you guys were up three, that was three, one, no three. Yeah. We were three, up one. three, one. And I don't know how much time was left and you guys were up six and you had the ball and yeah. a timeout was called. There's a lot of controversy about that. Um, and then, yeah, that didn't go your way. <laughs> you guys are in Toronto. You go back to the locker room and you see all the like celebration things. Oh like, no, they took it down in time. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. So like when, when we celebrate, they basically cover like right, all the, the lockers thing. and everything with plastic because there's just so much champagne. Uh, <laughs> so I think they started to do that, but, um, they were, they were also getting ready to set the stuff up on the court. You know how they build the stage yep. and they bring the, the trophies and everything. And they had the presentation. Uh -huh. So they were getting ready to do that. And then they had to like rush everything back in. Cause you know, we were using that same tunnel to come back in, in yeah. into the locker room. So, uh, you know, that was, that was a, that was a heartbreaker. What was the, uh, the, was everybody just, how are people? Like, how are your teammates? Were they, like, upset? Were they quiet? Like Everyone was really upset. Um, it was, like, <laughs> kind of quiet, and then every once in a while, someone would, you know, either either yell or, you know, throw something or... Oh, like, mad yell. Yeah, it was, it, was, uh, it was pretty heartbreaking because the city wanted it so bad. Yeah. And, like... And it would have been perfect because you were at home. We were at home, but not only that, like, prices, ticket prices were so crazy. Yeah. And so, like, after we went up... 3-1, the next game was in Toronto, so everyone's yep. families were all like, we got to be there. So everybody flew in, yep. and then everyone bought tickets, and everyone had all this stuff planned, and no one was expecting, or not that we were, like, downplaying or looking down on, on the Warriors. It was just like, all right, we're up 3-1. We're going to plan like we're going to win it, right. and we're going to have everything ready, and then we literally, it, we were like, we were like, oh, we're up six with three minutes um with three minutes left and the ball like you said and we were feeling good and then it was like what just happened and i think yeah. the way that we lost like is because it felt like we were about to celebrate uh-huh so that that one that one was tough i'm actually um i love how everyone regrouped for game six that's Some, what's, sometimes what's surprising the, yeah. yeah i mean i yeah, think at that crazy. point i think everyone's just still like 
all right, you know, we have to believe that we're the better team and we know that we squandered our opportunity, but, you know, we have another one. And so, I mean, I, a lot of respect, everyone just came super ready. I think that's something too, like with Kawhi, where it's just like, he's so consistent and steady where it's like, he doesn't really ha show too much emotion. So it's always just right. like, all right, we're <clears throat> coming back for battle. We're okay. Yeah. Um, that's, that's definitely the, the, uh, character he puts out there, but is he really, like, is Kawhi really a fun guy? <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Will loves Kawhi. Nah, he's cool. I mean, cool. we love, we think uh -huh. he's hella funny. Mm -hmm. But, he um, I mean, I, I, I don't know if it's real or not, but I think, like, to me, I just feel like that his character, just doing interviews and stuff, the way he answers questions so honestly, <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I think that's funny. Yeah, I mean, I, I think but he's, he's not joking, though. He's yeah, I think serious. he's there's like an innocence about him mm -hmm. where it's just like he whatever answer, what, whatever answer he gives is just like very, very straight up. Like he doesn't really seem like somebody who wants to like give a political answer or yeah. dance around a topic or whatever. He's just very like more so literal. But then um, off the court, he's just so like normal. And that's what people don't realize. Um, it's just like. He makes jokes, you know, if he walks by somebody and, and they're in his way or whatever, or even if they're not, just, you know, he'll mess with them, punch yeah. them in the chest and keep walking. And I mean, he's just <laughs> Sounds so like a bully he's just to me. <laughs> <laughs> There's a side of him that people don't yeah. get to see. For sure, yeah. for sure, for sure. And I you're think telling me that, but like I and I try to see it like, oh, maybe he's messing with people in interviews and stuff. You know, I think, you know, not everybody's themselves in front of the camera. And so yeah. I, see, I thought maybe he's trying to be funny, but like I just can't picture Kawhi coming to practice singing or you know, I can't, I don't know. I mean, do, do you even see that same, is he the same person that you see in interviews? Or you, is that like, oh, that's, he's being interviewed Kawhi right now. No, he's definitely, I mean, he's definitely different, but I think that's true for a lot of people too. Right. Um, I think we all, to some degree, it's like inevitable. It's just, I think the rare ones are, you know, are the ones that like, are every once in a while you find somebody who is able to, yeah. But, um, and then there's other people who go on the other extreme where it's like when when they get in front of cameras, everything is for show and everything is <laughs> yeah. really fun. And they, they turn on another personality. Um, but he, no, he's definitely, like, I would describe him as just like, think of any friend that you have, like any one of your more shy friends, but like still completely, really, really cool, really down to earth. Like you would never think he's, you know, two-time NBA Finals MVP. You would never think he's a superstar. <coughs> just the way he carries himself is like so laid back. I I love it. I mean, yeah. he has that Cali vibe. That's so cool. Cali yeah. vibe. I like that. Well, he's from there, right? Like yeah. in like Compton or something. Uh, I think it's Sandy. I think so or something. SoCal somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm not sure. Like and then he went. Demar to is from Compton. Yeah. yeah. And I saw you just posted something about him. Um, what was that? I mean, what did you post that because you saw the negativity going towards him? No, actually, to be honest, I was blackout for in terms of uh, oh, social, social media. media. Yeah. yeah, I was only posting what I needed to post, but I don't really, I wasn't reading or looking at anything. I just think for me, like if it was me and I put that much time yeah. into an organization, I mean, it would, it would hurt. Yeah. And so for me, I was just like, man, he deserves it. And, and like literally uh, the day after when we got on the plane, uh, to come here, I think like two or three guys were wearing, you know, his shirt. I saw that, yeah. And like, I think that's like, you know, he's obviously not like, "Yo, guys, wear my shirt." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's just like you you can tell everyone loves him and appreciates right. him. And so I was like, "Dude, well, it wasn't I, his choice, right?" To leave. Yeah, and it's just like I gotta say something, man. Yeah, so that's why I did it. Man, that was nice of you. <laughs> no. Speaking on that, the whole social media side, I don't normally respond to comments and stuff, but like, how does you? I mean. Now that you're not on blackout and you're reading comments, do you see all those memes that people are making of you? Like the ones that are saying, oh, you know, I mean, obviously a lot of people are celebrating you and saying you're like the first yeah. Asian American NBA champion. But then people are commenting, even Asian people, surprisingly, are like, yeah, but it's not like he played, right? They have that, they're pushing this meme thing saying like uh, uh, something about uh, making this stereotypical Asian joke, like, oh, he's the Asian in the group who didn't work hard for the A or whatever. Like I've seen yeah. all those memes and it's just like, I mean, I know how I personally feel about it, but I mean, how do you feel? Yeah. That's, I mean, that's a great question. Um, I think for me, uh, it's not like I, like I, I, there were times like in, in all honesty, there were times when I felt like I had to tell myself I deserved a championship, right. you know, because as a competitor who 
plays and has played my whole life, it's like I'm not used to not playing. And so I was right. kind of just like, oh, this is tough. And, like, do I really deserve it? And then I started to think about the whole journey. And I was like, dude, I definitely do. Yeah. Um, and I, I contributed to the, te- to the team. I played 23 games in the regular season. Um, I played against these guys all the time, whether it's in workouts or whatever. And, like, not only that, it's just, like, even watching a game, talking to guys or giving my opinion or – or whatever, you know, being a voice, I think right. that's like very, very valuable. And and just in terms of being staying ready and working out, it was like I worked really, really hard this year, and a ton of guys. I I just wish people understood just how hard we have to work, even right. the guys that never touch the floor, because you never know when you get that opportunity. So you literally sleep. Yeah, you got to stay ready and do everything like you're gonna play. Yeah, people and don't realize I think how much yeah. time you put it because you you'll post something like um and we talked about this before you'll post something like you know you want a game at PUBG or something and people would be like why aren't you practicing it'll be like twelve <laughs> at twelve at night and like you just practice eight hours or I don't know how long you guys practice but people will still make that comment because they're like they don't expect you to be a human outside of basketball. Yeah, I mean I think that's the difference too. It's like the normal job you can work you know, whatever, like if, if, I mean, I don't suggest this, but if you could work like 12 <laughs> hours a day, yeah. <clears throat> but when it comes to basketball, it's like, you can't do that. Right. You can Physically. only, yeah. I mean, if you're working hard, you can really only work three to four hours a day. And that's like probably not healthy. You can't do, do that every day. But the thing about basketball is that like you're taking care of your body, the other, whatever hours that you're awake. So whatever you're eating, like all the treatment that you're getting, um, how much you're sleeping, everything there's a whole science behind everything that you're doing even for me like on off days i have to like basically control how much i walk because because really? it'll have an impact because it's just like yeah, our yeah. bodies are always trying to recover right uh because you know obviously <coughs> with the 82 game season that's not like good for the body yeah um so it's like you're always trying to recover and recover and, and it ends up being like super i mean it's it's literally it's, it's full time and so yeah, I mean, after the game, if I play PUBG, it's like I'm not worried about what people right. think. Well, people on, don't really realize I'm too. Take this off. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Right. People don't really realize too that people take breaks after they work all day. It's like, it's like yeah. some people they don't tweet, "Hey, I just watched this this movie and I'm eating popcorn with my family," mm-hmm. so they can't be like, "Why, why aren't you practicing?" But Jeremy's like playing games, well, so it's a little more them, easier yeah. to like. It's easier know. to make fun of. Yeah, it's like, easier to like. But people put them on a, a pedestal because they know, like, oh, you make this amount of money and you have this many, you know, fans and stuff. You're in such a fortunate position. You should be like, if I was there, I would be working, you know, every single hour every day. Yeah. Without realizing, like, you're not going to be there for a day. You know, you're going to be that's like their, your life, and it's impossible to keep up that kind of, you know, it's almost it's unhealthy, right? To to yeah. be to be practicing more than what they're you know recommended. Yeah, I mean. <clears throat> Even on a game day, it's like I'm there in the morning because I know, like, all right, I, most likely I'm not going to play. So every morning I go and get a workout. Right. And then we do that. Then I come back before the game. And, like, honestly, for us, they have us there. If it's, like, a 7 o'clock game, we're there at, like, you know, 3.30 or 4 already working out. Mm-hmm. And then we just work out, <clears throat> go through walkthrough and do a bunch of stuff and then lift, do do extra conditioning, all that. And then – we watch the game and then if we get a chance we play but again it's just like like it's a full day of working out and like yeah. doing stuff and so i mean that's the other thing too i was just like man i definitely deserve it too because i got here like there's however many there's like you know billions of people and there's only 450 spots that's and thir- what 13 on the raptors specifically right yeah well Is that dress but there's more oh, like yeah. you can be up to like 17 <clears throat> at this point but right um, but yeah, there's, there's uh, including the two way. Um, but yeah, it's kind of complicated, but basically Regardless, roughly about that. And it's like, like 20 people. I'm, yeah, right. I'm there. I made it. And like, I worked hard to be here. And so I feel like for me, it's tough because I can understand what people are saying. I wish that people, I, I don't mind necessarily like if people make the joke of like, Oh, you didn't do anything, mm-hmm. but you got a ring. But I guess the way that it always, they always highlight, oh, you're you're that you're the Asian right, who right. who uh, the group. first Asian who didn't do something <coughs> in the group project, and so but I that's think, the meme that they're trying to push right now. Yeah, and I think it to me, I was shocked because it's coming from an Asian group that I've been. Yeah, and I and I see it, and I'm just like, dude, this is this guy's done so much for us to make us look cool, and you guys are like clowning him. I could see maybe other ethnicities because you know they're sick and tired of us supporting each other, <laughs> but yeah. but I but. 
Asians are making those jokes, and I'm just like, and people are obviously defending it too. Yeah, but it's like it's such an easy joke to make, and I mean, like even when I posted something about like I, I think I just tweeted like I was just happy, I was like, and I tagged you. And then people, were, I don't normally respond, but people were like, oh, but he didn't even play. I'm like, well, he's on the team. He practices with them. Like, Nick Nurse didn't play. He's, what, did he not win a championship? And, you know, the GM and the owner, like, they didn't play. Yeah. But they're part of the team, and they're help. Th- those are all parts of the team that you need to have in order to win. Yeah, no, I definitely, I mean, and it's like, even with, you know, you have the head coach, but then you have the assistant coaches, and mm-hmm. it's like, are they, you know, did you know, did they do anything or they, they weren't talking in the timeouts or yeah. they weren't doing the interviews or they weren't calling the plays or arguing with the refs or whatever. But it's again, everyone has their role. And like there's certain things that just there's so many things that happen. And that's that's why I think people care so much about like they talk about like having good locker room guys or good veteran presidents or people who are able to say things at the right time to be able to help the team. Right. And like, you know, I'm not saying I'm this perfect, <laughs> whatever, but I definitely again, I had to struggle with like. Do I do I really deserve this? And it's like the more I thought about, it, I was like, actually, no, I do, and I should enjoy it, and I should embrace it. And I'm not gonna like shy away from being able to celebrate that or like right. let somebody take that away from me. Obviously, yeah. do I wish that like, you know, I think that's the one thing. I mean, a lot of a lot of players kind of go through that. It's like while you're going mm-hmm. through the game of basketball and you're in the middle of your career or whatever it is, an entertainer, musician, like people don't always appreciate everything until after, and so like. Hopefully, you know, those same Asians that are making fun of me, hopefully, you know, five years down the road, 10 years down the road, when like I'm no longer playing, they can actually appreciate and be like, oh, that's the first <coughs> Asian American that ever right. won a, a NBA Yeah, I think right now right? they're just making it because it's like a convenient exactly. joke, yeah. right? It's yeah. a convenient meme. But like even those same jokes would happen if you were, if you did play. Like if you did play and you weren't Kawhi. If you played, yeah. if you were like had, uh, you know, Danny Green's numbers, right? Like if you... <laughs> Not, I mean, not that Danny Green did bad, but I mean, like, he's not the star. No, right? He's I not even the second mean. star. Like a role, like a role yeah, player like even, and, and then they were to make articles about you and not Kawhi. It's kind of like, oh, why are they highlighting this guy? He yeah. didn't do what, you know, he's not Kawhi. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. I mean, I just want to highlight the fact that you even say, I understand, like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you understand what they're saying and that you're even reflecting on it and asking yourself, do I deserve this? It's just all the more reason why you deserve it, in my opinion. I mean, like, you work super hard. It's such a huge accomplishment. And, uh, yeah. yeah. Jeremy is a very humble guy. Yeah. I mean, the fact I mean, that he's even here right now, like, in this <laughs> tiny room doing a podcast, two days after they won an NBA championship makes no sense to me. I told him yesterday we had uh, dinner, and I was like, you know, he said he'd, he'd come on the podcast. And I was like, when? Today. And I was just like, <laughs> but you should be, like, celebrating, like, <laughs> He, that night, he you guys had like a party with Drake. Drake flew in, and he's with his whole team. But um, damn, I mean, how was that, by the way? <laughs> Hanging with Drake to us, baby. It was uh, it was interesting. Drake knows you by name, obviously. <laughs> yeah, he he calls me Lynn. Um, <laughs> I mean, a lot of guys in the yeah, I mean, yeah. just because it's on the back of my jersey. But uh, no, it was interesting. <laughs> I mean, I feel like you know he popped in for a little bit and and said hi to everybody. But um, for the most part, no one really stuck around. Um, at your own celebration party? At the celebration, yeah. At the <laughs> celebration. Well, also we had a pre, like we had a whole dinner uh-huh, team from like dinner. nine to twelve with the whole staff. Nine to twelve. Yeah. What did you guys eat? Uh, we what what didn't we eat? They I brought mean, that's everything. Like a long time to be eating though. Yeah, but it was also like it was kind of one of those things where you're just the you know they brought the trophy <clears> and you had the whole staff and it was more just everybody right. hanging out and then like. And then the food would come midway through, and there was a ton of different courses, and it was just kind of like come and go as, as you want. And you didn't so, let you bring it today? <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I oh, was maybe like, we should I make it. I wanted to try to get the trophy in here. I was like, <laughs> oh, that, be crazy. I, I was like it, thinking was like, you were joking, but he actually <laughs> asked to bring the trophy here That's, to, a, crazy. to a person's house <laughs> for a podcast. <laughs> Oh, hey too. man, I got to support. I know. I have, no, yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. I appreciate you coming here. <laughs> you got to fly to Toronto. It's crazy to me that you're even just doing this. But thank you again for being here. Yeah. Oh man, that's um, I wanted to ask you about. You mentioned something like you know about social media and stuff, and I kind of wanted to ask you, coming from two people on this side who are pretty bad and don't always enjoy like, every aspect of participating in social media, right? Because we suck at posting yeah. everything, like. You personally and, like, the people around you, like, do, are you guys super active and do you guys enjoy participating in that way? I mean, I know interacting with fans is one thing, but, you know, like, posting photos and stuff like that is a different kind of ball I would, game. I would say 
No, like I, I'm not like I'm not the type of person that just like, you know, um, it's not it's not uh, like by default or like, oh, yeah, I'm just going to post and I enjoy that. For me, it's kind of like I had to like work into that mindset of thinking right. about it. For sure. Just because <clears throat> I guess the way that I would post personally is very different than the way that I kind of post, uh, you know, as under my actual account. And I think, you know, there's a lot of things that can be misinterpreted. Actually, if I could, I would most or all of my posts would be like jokes and like <laughs> making fun of my family and friends. Like that's who I yeah. would be yeah. if I wasn't like, you're like catering in the, to in the your spotlight. Fans. Yeah. And, and I th also think just like the, the pub, like there's just so many things that could be misinterpreted, right? Like if I yeah. say anything or if I make fun of anybody, it's a headline and it's like, oh, you're disrespectful or whatever. So yeah. I think for me, um, I just try to do it more positively because I feel like on social media, it's just like, it's just, uh, man, I know. I mean, you you're guys you're feel. very smart in terms <laughs> of like, like your your answers are like has ha, like I've just I'm I'm thinking specifically about like the the Kenya Martin thing uh. and like how brilliant that response was and it was so like it was PR but it was like smart and I know you could have said some stuff to make it really funny. And make it, I mean, I, I know that's just not you, but like if I was like going at somebody and, it's you know, just brain. make it, yeah, <laughs> but it, you did it in such a classy, smart way. It was just like, well, I, I mean, you win, like you win, like you, there's just no fight here. Mm -hmm. Like it's just, it's just a smart, like you, you didn't come at him, but I mean, there was a little bit of like a little coming at Kenya Martin, right? Yeah. I mean, I think that's the, that's like the fine line, I guess that like I always try to walk because I try to. I want to be a good role model. Obviously, you know, my faith is very important to me. And so I want to, you know, be loving and gracious in everything I do. But then there's also the other side of just like, and, and I don't think, and I used to kind of see them as mutually exclusive, mm -hmm. but like you can be loving and gracious and all that. And you can also stand up for yourself because I feel like, especially, especially on social media, especially being an Asian in the NBA, um, like you're just always kind of dealing with certain aspects of, of the, of, you know what it, I mean maybe it's not always race or whatever but like there's just a lot of things about my story where it's right. always been like oh I'm trying I feel like I'm trying to fight for respect and I'm always trying to fight for that respect and I know that's always going to be here because you know for me playing basketball it's just like if, if I have a bad play um it's just like it just looks it's worse extra highlighted yeah because mm -hmm. I, I I don't look the part uh on the other hand if I have mm -hmm. a good play it just looks even better again because I don't look the part yeah. And, and so I think that's just a part of it. And so for me, I always just try to, I try to stand up for myself. Um, and, and also like for the things I represent Yeah, and, and really a big part of it is like, I really want like Asians to be respected and yeah. not to be seen as just like, Oh, let's just clown on them or that's a convenient joke or like, Oh, right. they're not going to say anything back or whatever. So I just try to do that. And then at the same time, do it in a way that's like loving. And it's not like, oh, you know, I'm so much better than you or whatever. Um, it's just like, dude, I just felt like I was lapsed in judgment. I feel like, you know, you have Chinese tattoos and I just don't get it. I don't get what for you're saying. For those that don't know, I mean, you could look it up, but it's the whole when Jeremy had dreads for a little bit, right? Yep. And he was called out by one of the, you know, Kenya Martin. He used to play basketball. Um basically called off for like culture appropriation or something along the lines. And, you know, you actually didn't just do it. Like you did your research, like you talked to people, you know, beforehand. So it was even more shocking when they started to make that like a thing. Right. And then, I mean, you, people can look it up, but I just thought that was, uh, it was interesting how you respond. I was like, that's such a, when I read it, I was like, that's such a Jeremy response. It's so positive and like, so like, well, like almost like a PR person, but with a little bit of like, Okay, I, yeah. I got you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the good thing, though, is he, he responded really well, too. He did, yeah. He and, did. He, and he uh, called me, and then we, we talked it out. And, uh, you know, for him, I think that, that's kind of what I was also highlighting. He, you know, he kind of said, like, hey, I actually meant it much more in a joking way. But it was, like, super blown out of proportion in a way I didn't expect. Right. And I think the thing that really made me sad, too, was, like, then people started going at him and being, like, racist towards him. That's and I was just happen, like, though. yeah, and I was just like, that's not really what anybody wanted. Um, but but then, you know, when I got hurt, I I, I tore uh, my patellar tendon mm -hmm. not long after. <clears throat> and, and he was one of the guys that called me. And uh, I mean, I was just like, 
That's cool. You know what? That's legit. Yeah. And I got a lot of respect for, for Kenny Warren. Yeah. And that's what you mean by when you, the way you approach social media is, is stuff getting blown out of proportion exactly like that, right? Yeah. That's kind of an well, example. There's, there's and people the, who get paid just to talk about you guys. That's why every little yeah. thing you do is on under a microscope. It's yeah. kind of ridiculous yeah. um, when you really think about like, I mean, it makes sense because people are interested in you. That's how you guys get paid because so much people are watching, but they don't realize like, you're not, you're still humans, right? And yeah. it's, it sounds really obvious, but it's, they're not, you're not treated that way, right? Yeah. And I think that's like, people don't, people forget that, right? People always forget that. And then when they actually like get in a place where they're getting <laughs> criticized and that's what, what happens all the time to fans, like they'll say a bunch of stuff. And then if a, if a, you know, athlete actually responds and then the whole like legion yep. of fans goes after them, they like delete the they tweet, do, they yeah. block mm -hmm. their account. They like, you know, it's just like, they don't realize that when it's actually you in that seat, it's very different, which is why for me, again, like I'm not like huge in terms of like, like when I'm done playing and stuff, I don't know what my social media, you know, activity will look like. But right now, like I just want to be positive on social media where it's just like, and actually we've talked about this and it's like, I respect that. Like Ryan always talks about like, man, I want, I just want social media to be more positive and to be more uplifting. Like, how can we, how can we bring that? How can we do that? Um, and I think that's like, I mean, I, I totally agree. It's just like, and that and that's the thing. All these kids are looking up to us and, and everybody else. And if we highlight certain things like roasting people or whatever, it's just like <clears> that's what they're going to grow up thinking is right, right and doing. And then, like, whatever they do on social media, it will eventually trickle into kind of what they do in their lives. And it's just like that's not the path that, or the example that we want to set. Yeah. Wow, that just got serious. I mean, that's that good. Was, yeah, that's, like, really insightful and, <laughs> and intelligent. And it's something you've been thinking about because you got into, like, this passionate mode, which is yeah. good. Yeah, I definitely thought about it. Yeah, I know. Oh, yeah. I know. But I mean, like that is that is, you know, going back to you guys being highlighted on everything. I mean, every little thing you guys do. I mean, I watch all those shows like First Take, Undisputed. I watch all the shows to see what people are saying. And uh, I can understand why people think a certain way based on what they watch. Yeah. If I yeah, didn't know you personally, like I had a different perspective from compared to many San Antonio fans when Kawhi, you know, went to, you know, asked to be traded. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and even the whole Kevin Durant situation when he first went to go into state at first, I was just like, what, dude? Like, how are you going to, how are you going to, you know, I was like the same thing that all the narratives were being pushed. Yeah. And I never really saw it unless I, um, until I knew you, I mean, I knew you at the time, but if I didn't know you, I would be thinking the same thing as everybody else. But then just knowing you and you're an NBA player, it's just like, oh man, these are like humans. And it makes you think a little bit more like there's so much more behind the scenes that people don't know about. Yeah. I mean, obviously you don't have to go into detail about that, but there's a lot of things that people don't know, basically. I mean, it's, and that's the class, that's exactly why, as like, for me, I can't read everyone's comments. It's just yeah. like hard because I'm giving them space in my mind and I'm, I'm, I'm letting their words actually like influence me when it's like, you don't actually understand. And it's like, it's hilarious because you can play a game and if you go online and people will be like, be more aggressive. Yeah. And then it's like, okay, but I also <coughs> like, I just called it, got called in by my coach and was, he was like, I really need you to, you know, I'm just drawing an example. Yeah. Um, I'm like, um, I, I guess a true example from uh, a time in my career. And it's like, no, I need you to, I need you to like look for your teammates first and you know, you can get your shot and you'll score when you're going to score. But sometimes like your teammates struggle. So you got to set them up first. And so you're kind of doing that. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, he's so passive. Right. Right. And then like <clears throat> you kind of, and but you can go on the other end and you can be more aggressive or whatever. And then like, the coach may be like, hey, no, I, that's, I I know that you can score, but that's not what I need from you right now at this moment. And so, right. you know, there's always like... And a player can't come out and say that when they're being it, called it, out. Because now you're throwing other people under exactly. the bus and now you're saying like, oh, my well, coach told me that my teammates can't like create their own shots. So I have to create it for them and make sure that they get going and try to, you know, call plays. And then like when, you know, when, when the offense dries up, then it's time for me to, you know, be more aggressive and whatever. And it's like, you can't explain everything. Yeah. So it's like, all right, I'm not going to, I'm not even going to try. Yeah. And so it's just it's just funny because that's it doesn't really it's, it's, it doesn't really matter what you do. Like there will be a side that's like, yeah. oh, no, you're not doing it right. Right. right? <laughs> it's like you could be like doing this podcast and they're like, dude, Ryan, like your 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 questions are too serious. And then if you go on the other hand and you make it lighthearted and then yeah. someone's going to be like, why is this, like, was this a joke? It's a podcast. You yeah, you got Jeremy Lin on and you asked him that. <laughs> You know, like, and I mean, so it's, it's going to happen regardless. Yeah, I, mean, I understand that's it, part of it. Right. But it's even worse for you. I think it's worse for you guys, because even if you try to stand up for yourself, like you said, you're throwing someone under the bus or I mean, yeah. you can't because it's like, yeah. that's not 
what professionals are supposed to do. We could do that. I could stand up for myself, make a whole nother video and talk about it. Yeah. But that's you true. don't necessarily, you're on the platform that is talking about you. Yeah. So it's a little bit different scenario. That's I, think true, we, yeah. I think we just have to get used to being misunderstood. Like yeah. I, we're just constantly being misunderstood and that we're okay with it. And, and that's why the biggest, the easiest thing is just not to know when you're being misunderstood and how you're being misunderstood. It's just like, don't look at it. Yeah. And just, Keep working hard. Keep doing your thing. It's Literally, it's just tun- tunnel vision, right? Yeah, big time. And I think that's like, but when I when when we get to that point, like when I do that, it's just like I'm so locked in on what I need to be mm-hmm. and do, and what my team needs from me. It's just like I don't really care. Yeah. Um, but so you know what? Nice. It must have. I mean, for the average person to take that advice, I think it's tough because you don't go through like you had to go through it and get to a certain point in your life where like I need to come up with this current mindset that you have. Uh, to be able to function, right? Because if not, oh, it's going to bother you. It's going to stress. I'm sure it, st- it stressed me out right yeah. in the beginning, um, but you find ways to cope. Man, I mean, for me, so I was always the underdog, mm-hmm. which means like you don't have criticism, you don't have expectations. Yeah. I was always surprising people my whole life, like, oh, he's better than a dot. Oh, he's better than a dot. Oh, he's yeah, better than a dot. Oh nice, my right? goodness, yeah. And then New York happened. Oh my, where did this guy come and from? Switched. And then all of a sudden, it's boom, overnight switch, yeah. right? And I remember going to the Rockets and the way that the, the Rockets fans, like, they would kill me. And, and mm-hmm. like, that was the first time for me where I was just like receiving so much criticism. And I was just like, I really struggled. I had I had really like bad anxiety. Uh-huh. Um, there are times after games where I couldn't sleep, and like it was just like a gut wrenching feeling. And I had to, and, I, and it was one of the best things that happened to me because I had to go through that to realize like the approval of people just doesn't really mean anything because you know you play well today, you don't tomorrow. Like they're gonna come and go, and it's gonna. But at the end of the day, like even when things are great and you win, like there's, you know, there's still gonna be haters like there's always going to be haters. And so for me, it's like, it's not fulfilling to like be approved by people anymore. Right. I actually don't, it's just not right. And I think you understand that too, for sure. It's because like, if you're just driven by like what everyone else says about you, you're, you don't actually, you're, you're not actually yourself. You don't actually have like a foundation. So that's where my faith came in. And I was just like, look, like as long as God is honestly proud of me, which again goes back to kind of your first question here is like, Hey, like the whole thing about like the championship is like, dude, I know how hard I worked. And I know like the way I prepared and I know the way I cheered for my teammates when I didn't have to, or mm-hmm. the way that I tried to give advice or the way, whatever it is, like all the way down the, all the way down the road. It's like, I know that I did everything in my power to be ready and to, to be the best player. And there was no actual evidence of that on the court. Unfortunately in the finals, I didn't get to play, but it's like, dude, no one can take that away from me that I did yeah. things the right way and no one will know. Right. <laughs> and no one will see it, but that's okay. God, like for me, it's like, as long as God approves of that, like I'm very, very happy inside. And that is not an easy place to get to. You had to go through the bumps and the bruises and the criticism and all of that right. to finally kind of get, you know, and it's some that like when you hold on to something and you love it so much, like it's not always easy to let go. And that's a big part of like faith for me. It's like learning to let go of things that I really, really care about. Uh, uh-huh. Like, like, being liked by people right right like i genuinely want my fans and everyone to like love me and it's like you know there are parts of me that'll always like hurt because it's like man while i was playing this whole time i was always like this is what this was the narrative on me or what this this is what always people were always saying and like there's a part of me that just now is just like hey i've 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 let that go Mm -hmm. well i mean like i said you have to get to a you have to the reason why I think it's hard for a lot of people to relate is because they don't go through it, right? You go yeah. through it and then you have to, you get to a point where you're desperate to like get out of it, that mindset. So you come up with like, okay, you really start to think, think a little deeper than just, you know, how you're feeling currently. Yeah. And I guess, I mean, you, you've had a lot of ups and downs, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I just think you, it got springboarded because New York was such a big up. Yeah. Um, it's just it, so it's funny. It's so because extreme. Everything's yeah. so extreme. Before everybody, like you went, when you were in Golden State, I remember you'd just be on the court for like five minutes or something and people were going crazy for you. Every shot you took, even if it's a miss, they were going crazy. Yeah. All of a sudden New York happens, they're still going crazy. But like in, in Houston, it's just like, oh, he misses two, three shots in a row. It's all of a sudden all Asians can't play. Yeah. Right. Just because, no, because of all the hype. Right. Yeah. And I think the same thing is happening right now where it's like so many Asian people are celebrating because he's, you know, the first Asian American to uh, win a championship. Um, so many people are celebrating it so much that people are like trying to bring it, like match that energy and like bring you back down. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's, if there yeah. wasn't that intention on you, I don't think they would be making those same jokes. Yeah. yeah. Right. And I think, I mean, who in our world today, like 
who is really, really great at what they do and doesn't have that exact, right. exactly what you said. It's like the more that people love you, there will always, you will always have that larger group that like, like, a, uh, like the more that more people like you, you will have a group of people yeah. that spring up that really don't like you and like hate on you. And it's like purely because they're kind of tired of hearing about how good exactly, you are. Yeah. And, mm. and I think that's like a big, I mean, that's, that's, that's everybody, right? Even yeah. like, MJ when he was playing or mm -hmm. or all these like great players it's just like there's always like even LeBron now or or KD or whatever just our, our top you know a lot of the top players you know Kawhi has gone through a lot of criticism too with everything and and so I mean it comes with the territory but uh <laughs> at the end of the day we still get to hoop for a living and yep. you can't you yep. can't you can't take that away from us and and we can't complain there you go not easy though. um with that being said we're gonna do a quick shishi break and we'll be right back shishi break All right, we're back from the break. I'm taking over the Off the Pill podcast. All right. I just want to say this is Ryan's, like, dream come true to have a sports podcast. <laughs> I know. I don't normally get to talk about sports. That's why I'm sports. just sitting here, like, mm -hmm, go for it. <laughs> well, you know, so, you know a little bit. You little know bit. about the Kawhi trade. A little bit. But it's fun to see you, how excited you are to ask him about sports questions. Because he never gets to do this. So. I know. I'm, like, the opposite. I'm, like, so... Yeah, let's talk I, about I literally things. took a picture of like your your yeah, room. You took a picture of this wall. I was um, like, dude, I love how you designed it. People are, <laughs> for people who are listening, he's like, man, I'm interested in interior design. You were telling me the other day um, on this, like, well, we were talking about for one, like your off season got cut, like your vacation oh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> got yeah. cut in like half. I mean, for good reason, right? For great reason, yeah. yeah. But um, there's, I mean, realistically, as a human, <laughs> like you have less time to do stuff. Yeah, and you still normally, as I mean, you're like you said, you have to. You have to force yourself to take breaks. I'm not. I'm sure not all players are like that. You don't have to call them out, but that's true, right? Not all yeah. players work like how. I mean, I only know you, right? I don't know other NBA players, but you work constantly, like off season, every single day, pretty much. Is that common for every NBA player? Or I would say on a team of you know 15, um, you'll have like you'll have. I don't know. There there aren't that many that are just straight up lazy like. Oh, don't yeah. care. Because if not, they don't. wouldn't be there. Yeah. <clears throat> I think what we, what you see is there are people that are maybe more loose. Like they, they may, you know, they work when they need to, but they don't, you know, they don't do anything above or extra or um, they might not like live the healthiest lifestyle or take right. care of how they eat or whatever. Um, and then, and you'll have like a, a group of, you know, a smaller group of that. And then you'll have like that middle group where it's just like definitely, you know, professional and they do the right thing and they're there every day mm -hmm. and they're consistent. And then you have a, a smaller group. Again, I mean, I guess it's like kind of like a curve, right? So it's like you'll have less A's right. and F's and more people will be grouped in the middle. But and then you have that higher extreme. I mean, that higher group, but less people where it's just like they work really, really hard mm -hmm. and, and they work too hard. And, uh, you know, I think that's just pretty typical for each team. But um, it is but something you that put yourself there. So you're an A plus. Uh, so I would say, I'm just trying to see where like the, cause I know your kind of workout schedule and how often you train and even off season, right? How short your break is. Is that where, where would you put yourself? I mean, I think I'm like, I'm extreme in, in hard work, like work hard, really, really hard, but not like, not in a good way, like unhealthily. Mm, right. And this is something that, that I've always battled for my whole career. <clears throat> and like now I feel like over the last few years I've gotten much, much better at Right. And, and that's something that we were talking about yesterday because, you know, you kind of talk about it as well. And it's like, we want to be great at what we do. We don't mm -hmm. take our opportunities for granted. But for me, there's definitely a, a, an element of like, I, I can go too far in that extreme and it'll, it'll hurt me in the long run. It'll mm -hmm. hurt me in the yeah. short term. It'll hurt me in the long run. You get burnt out. You, 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 you know, your body doesn't recover or whatever. And so, you know, for me this past year and the, actually the last two to three years, I've changed so many different things. Um, and I've, and I've just put more of a premium on rest and recovery. And I literally have to like write in rules for myself. <laughs> otherwise I don't follow them. Right. right. Like I have to say every X amount of days you take this day, you know, you have to take that day off. I have to plan out my off days in advance. Otherwise I refuse to take them. Like, right. and I mean, I, that's some for you. I mean, you can talk about it too. Cause literally well, you're we, we so busy. Yeah. This. You're, yeah. you're so busy. And I'm always like, yo, come out. And you're like, Oh, I got to work on this video. I got to work on that video yeah. and the amount. And that's the thing that people don't see too. Is like to be great at what you do, to be great at anything. 
there's so many areas, like hundreds of areas that you could separate yourself in a good direction or like in a bad direction. Yeah. <clears throat> and like the accumulation of all those decisions is what makes somebody great is if they are cons- consistently winning these small wins and these small battles. And I mean, that's something for you too. It's like, Dude, you work so hard. You put so much thought into your craft. I mean, you can talk about it too. That's, I mean, that's, that's what I, I want to do as backup. I want to ask more questions. Yeah. But, well, that's <laughs> for you because I actually talked to, like, I, I know Ryan personally, but then I know that he would never say this on his own thing. Yeah. So that's why I was like, dude, I actually want you to share because yeah. I think you have so much insight that, like, even your own fans don't hear because you're not going to sit here and, like, toot your own horn, but I, now I'm going to make you. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, like you said about the small battles, Ryan comes up with, like, a hundred ideas and he picks, like, maybe one of them. And it's just like filtering through those ones until that one is perfect and he's happy with it. And it's know? like you have a hundred ideas. Do you know how long, like how, you know, how much, it, <laughs> yeah. how much brain power goes into all those different ideas and right. thinking through them? I mean, <clears throat> that's this is why I bring it up though, too. I, yeah. mean, I think it would help people. Like when I say that, you know, we, well, we didn't say it yet, but you know, you've been forcing yourself as have I to try and take breaks, right? Yeah. Because it's almost like it's, it's almost better for you. Right. Um, and then this off season is, you know, a little shorter for you, which is why I was saying, like, I was going to bring up your other passion that I didn't even know about that you want to do. I just think it's interesting. Like, I, yeah. who, who, I mean, it, other than playing games, you're also passionate about food. I love, I love eating. Like, not just eating. You're legit, like, you're legit passionate. You study it. You, like, look up cookbooks and stuff, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I do a good amount of research on food, and then, like, I love cooking. Um, I think a lot of it is nutrition too. Like I have to eat healthy yeah. and I love, yeah. and I eat a ton when I'm working out. Like it's I'm crazy saying how like, much he eats. I eat way more than a normal human being. Um, <laughs> I'll like, <laughs> I'll still remember the time you were in Houston and we went to dinner, me, Kev, oh, you and, yeah. uh, uh, Jana Parsons. Uh, oh yeah. Jay, what's her? Jay, what, yeah. Um, and then, you, and then we all ordered our own like Mexican or was it barbecue dish? Yeah. Yeah. I remember you telling he me He had like three main courses like and then i think it was parsons he had like you know he also ordered that and he's a big guy but like jeremy's not nearly as tall as him yeah and i was just shocked i was like this is normal for you like this is one meal <laughs> three like huge plates of food i, I get it makes sense with how much calories yeah. they burn but yes um, that, that's how i got into it it's because i have to eat so much <laughs> yeah. and i have to eat healthy yeah i might as well like learn about it be able to control the process cook and then also find other spots that are, and then i just began to see it more and more as art, mm-hmm. right? Like, it's just like, mm. it is art. Yeah. Like when they, when, and I, and that's the thing is like, I, I travel so much and I go to so many different cities and I've, and, and across the world too, I've gone to so many different countries and I see food and it's just like, now at this point, it's like, I'm looking for really unique experiences. So if I go to your restaurant, I want to find something that I can't find in other places. Yeah, yeah. And like, mm-hmm. it could be like something as simple as a burger or, or, you know, chicken wings or whatever, but it's like, what makes it different? What makes it unique? And so now that's the thing that I love is finding those type of hidden gems. And what I've also realized is a lot of times what everyone else says is good. I mean, it is, it probably is good, but a lot of times, like I don't always agree with just what the, the most hyped spot would be. And I think there's a lot of fun in finding like hidden gems as well. Yeah. Um, I was pitching for you to do a show. You should do (laughs) a show for that. Yeah, I don't know when you'd have time to do it, but basically that all stemmed from, uh, yeah, uh, forcing ourselves to take breaks. Yeah. <laughs> and you're gonna go. You're oh, gonna that's go right. That which means sick. N- which means I said after the break, I'm gonna take it over. Yeah, now go I, ahead. Now I go get ahead. to ask these questions, dude. A Jeremy Food sh- Netflix series, I will be, <laughs> dude. That would be sick. Well, he's he's Jeremy's off the pill podcast right now. Yeah, this is my this is my podcast. <laughs> all right, all go right. ahead. All right, let's see. <laughs> because I, n- I didn't think about this before but yeah. there's so many good things that you've shared with me that i'm like all right you gotta tell the world i mean all right maybe we'll start with like what do you want what do you want your legacy to be like in terms know, of like that's a deep yeah. question yeah. to start i'm telling you Jeez. i'm telling you i'm going for it i only i, I only have what 10 minutes 15 yeah, i don't know what 15, i have good 15 <laughs> left but i, I just want to i want you kind of explain the genius behind like what you're doing but also like all the, I, I want to try to get into like even the way that when you talk about like the, the jokes that you or whatever mm-hmm. it's just like there's so much there's so much thought that goes behind it and I want people to see it. I mean, well, right now, I mean, the, the whole reason I started the podcast was like like I said to you, like I'm yeah. I'm and I've I've said it before, like it's this kind of version of me taking a break because before it was like you know I, it was every single day. Um, people don't see it because. I, like Will said, I'm thinking hundreds of ideas and maybe not literally hundreds, but like a bunch of different ideas and most of them get scrapped. Um, and I guess it's not really a legacy, but the reason why most of them don't make it, even though I know it 
could easily I could just make something and post it. It's more for me. It's more me like feeling if it's not if I'm not doing something new or I feel like a joke is something too similar that, to what I've done or it has no real meaning. It's just funny. Then it's not interesting to me. Uh, if you can incorporate some kind of message that like makes people feel something and learn, take something from it, then that's the kind of videos I like making. There's not not a lot of them, not all the ones I do, but that's the reason why it takes me so long to post because I'm always trying to find that. Um, it's almost like a high. Yeah, you know, it's like chasing that high of like once you. It's it, I don't know how to describe a feeling, but like once you're when you're writing it and you find that perfect ending that will make someone feel something, and I if I can feel it, I know some other people will because I've. Basically, you only get that feeling when you can, like, shock yourself. Like, oh, that lined up perfectly or whatever it is. Um, and to get that feeling, it's it gets harder and harder because you got to top yourself. It's like a drug, right? It's like you, you keep doing it, and then it becomes nothing, numbness, and then you got to top yourself. And at a certain point, you're going to burn out, right? Yeah. So that's why um, I guess it's, I guess I don't know if that's answering question of legacy, but I wanted to do something that create any kind of content that's new, that kind of... Uh, Makes people feel something, I guess. All right. And then I guess talk a little bit about when you say, like, it makes people feel something. Mm -hmm. Like, describe that. Because well, I know that, <clears throat> the you know, I guess the type of impact. Because it's not just, you don't want people just to, you know, it, it's, you're, there's a certain thing that, you know, there's a direction that you want to go, right? With the right. impact that you want to make. Well, I mean, obviously, there's, I mean, certain videos, though, they're, I do think they're not necessarily the best messages. They're not even trying to make a message, but it is the feeling of, uh, to get anybody this way, I describe it to people. Like a lot of times people say movies are bad, but like whether it's feeling afraid or laughing, or if you can get someone to, to have a real emotion, I think that's, that's powerful and that's hard to do. You know, for, I, I think some people don't think about that, but it's really hard to get somebody to feel something and, yeah. you know, walk away from a good movie and feel like, man, I kind of, I rethink my mind, like my life, my mindset a little bit because of the, because of a movie. Like that's always the goal at every video. Um, but the specific message, I think, uh, there's there's a ton. And a lot of times, it's based on. I mean, it is based on positivity, but I do it in a way that's not. I try to do it in a way that's not cheesy. Yeah. Um, so, like for example, like one of the mes messages I always tried to push, right, is a uh, simple most like generic thing, which is, you know, just be nicer to people. Yeah. But I won't say that because it's, you know, everybody's, we've heard that all our lives growing up. I would say treat people like they're dying, right? Because if a guy spilled coffee on your shoes and, you know, if you're having a bad day, you're going to yell, you're going to be mad. Like yeah. most people, you know, I've seen people get mad. Yeah. But if that person spills on their shoes and they're bald and it looks like they're like in a robe, like sick, you're not going to yell at that person. Yeah. You're going to just be like, you know, what, it's fine, dude. But like that's, that's basically how... I would like to send the message in a way that's different. If yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. No, I mean, that makes a ton of sense. Um, I mean, can you also talk about like just the, the part where like, you know, all the people that you have supporting you and helping you from a day to day basis and just like the pressure of, because, you know, there's always people behind the scenes and, and that's the thing that, you know, not everybody sees is like, whenever there's someone in the spotlight and they have to do a lot of things and there's a lot that goes into that brand, there's so there's, you know, 10, 20 <clears throat> people behind the scenes that are building yep. that for them. Can you talk about the pressure of that and the way that like how you try to be, because we've seen so many people that like don't treat those people well, but the way that you like, actually that's why I kind of like talking to you about it when we do sit down, like away from the cameras is like talking about that pressure because you try to care for them in ways that like, <clears throat> I'm sure they don't even know. It's just like, but you put it on yourself to, you know, make sure everything is great for for them and make sure. I mean, this sounds like a good question. Dude. Yeah, this is something like, I mean, you, this we just talked about. This is something you can also relate to too, you know. For sure. But I mean, but we can talk about it. Like Jeremy how there is, the fire. I know, um, uh, how there is, it, it, a lot of people don't see that stuff, right? And especially if it's like, you know, like I'm working with like Will or like some of the guys and even my mom helps. Like it's a different dynamic than like working at some, like a corporate job, right? Yeah. I think um, there there is more of a pressure too because you feel like you need to, I can't just say, hey, I quit. Because if you quit, you know, a lot of people with, in the back of their heads, even if they're not going to quit, they can have that in the back of their heads. But there's and there's no guilt because they're a part of an organization or whatever. If you if we were to quit our jobs, it affects a lot of people, right? So I think naturally, even if you're not doing as well, it's still affecting others. Yeah. You know? 
And I think there's a lot of pressure there. Um, and I think even that goes kind of back to, I guess, in the whole the whole point of like saying like taking rest for yourself and um, doing that. I think I've learned that you have to think about yourself more to really help even other people around you, right? Because if you're not taking care of yourself, you eventually become unable to take care yeah, of other you people. Burn, well, yeah, you burn out. Well, in my yeah. case, you burn out. And then it's like, well, if I didn't, I should have took those breaks because I'm going to fail. And if I fail, you're actually not helping these other people. Yeah. And you're not doing them any favors, right? And I think, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm, 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 I don't know how that relates to, I'm trying to think of how it relates to other people, but I'm sure it, in other scenarios. See, you know, even I that right there. On that you see that? <laughs> see, he's like, how do, I don't even know how does, how does that relate to other people. The, but that's the <laughs> point. The point is that in everything you do, especially on camera, it's like you're always trying to think about, like, how can you send a certain, or, like, how yeah, can you right. create a positive impact? And you're always thinking about other people. And it's like that concept of always thinking about other people. If you do that too much, you end up getting to a place where you are no longer able to do that. But mm -hmm. that's what people don't always see is like they see your videos and they're just like, oh, uh, it's so easy. You just sit at home and make funny jokes or you just, you know, whatever, or you make podcasts or, you know, you just make home videos or whatever. And it's like very easy to just like say a, a blanket statement like that or, you know, oh. and it's just like, no, at the end of the day, it's like, no, you are so highly subscribed you're so popular like i can't go anywhere if there's anybody like who sees you know, i was like oh can you can you i cannot tell you how many people are like can you call ryan for me are you his what? cousin cut to coming to you <laughs> yeah no all yeah, the that's time a and silly. especially when we go to like but you know do people any do the same thing basketball camps and everything it's yeah. like these ki the kids literally love that's you so and then funny. i have parents coming up to me and like oh uh this has happened for sure multiple times like oh i know you uh you know, I know you play basketball, but um, I heard you're friends with uh, <laughs> a so YouTuber that my dude. my child like <laughs> absolutely loves, like blah blah um, blah. And that, and the parents watch the videos now. Right. The parents are watching the videos, and I'm like, mm -hmm. dude, that's amazing. But again, that's the whole thing. That's like you're always thinking about other people, and that's like again very admirable. And like you're never gonna say it. That's why. That's why I'm like, all right, <laughs> I get to say it now. Yeah, I mean, I, I get to have it. everybody see. The side that Absolutely. I see. I mean, you, yeah, maybe you should speak too on the, I mean, on the back end where it's just like you're seeing things that the, the public doesn't get to see as well. Yeah. I mean, I'd just like to say something about how you, you asked about how you so often see people treating the people under them like kind of poorly just because, you know, there's like, there's a dynamic of like someone that's working above you and then there's employees under you. But for Ryan, like it's always been like we're, he's friends with everybody. Like we're all friends and he's very good at, um, it's just like how you would, you might have one friend that you can joke around with and one friend you can be serious with and one friend you can do a little bit of both and one friend, like when it comes to like the work side, I feel like what I've witnessed before with Ryan is he's good at, um, like treating people like how they, how you would a, a different friend that you can talk to. Right. So it's like, he's not going to just treat everyone in a blanket way. He's not yeah. going to give everyone this blanket answer That's what we were talking about yesterday. You know what I mean? So like. <laughs> If someone, if he, if he can read that someone's going through like um, a little bit of a hard time, he can kind of, you know, like it's, it's, it's like the, the extra step that uh, someone who is in like a, a position of like a boss or whatever goes to, you know what I mean? To like almost like cater his responses and how he treats people in those positions. That's like my, you know, my perspective of it, you know what I mean? So, yeah, and that's actually, I mean, I guess that makes sense now. It's like, okay, why, are, you know, how do we you know, use that to encourage other people. It's like, I mean, it's not just if you're in a leadership position, but it's just taking the time to get to know people, to know what they need, yeah. not what you think they need. Right. And I think that's like, everybody is different. And it's like, what motivates somebody is different. And sometimes it's like, if you walk by a homeless person and you're just like, oh, you know, here's, here's uh, 50 cents, but what happens if what they want is, you know, maybe they need to, they want to eat at that restaurant, but you know, or get food from that certain spot, but that they won't let, sometimes, you know, stores won't, will, will not let them come in and, and buy food. And, or maybe sometimes they actually don't need any of that. Sometimes maybe they just need like someone to sit down and just see how they're doing mm -hmm. and just right. have a conversation for five minutes. <clears throat> but it's like, if you don't take the time to know what the people around you need, then you actually can't serve them the way that they need to be served. Or like you can't lead them the way that they, they yeah. need to be led. That's and a good I way to say like, it. Yeah. 
And that, and that's true for everybody. You don't even have to be in a leadership position. It's just like the people around you. You gotta, you have to take that time. And there's a constant selflessness that you have to always be thinking about. Like, okay, I'm picking up. I'm learning about these other people, and I'm not so immersed in my own stuff and always thinking about myself. Like, I can think, I can read, I can, you know. And that's basically what you're saying is like, dude. There's times where like he can talk to me about something, but that won't work for somebody else. But he understands the difference. Yeah, right? absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I mean, that definitely is helpful. It, helpful in every scenario, right? Even yeah. if you're like just um, talking to family members or whatever it is, just just being able to see things from a different perspective, I think is it's very helpful to yeah. not just like assume your way is right and yeah. one way of thinking, like thinking in other people's shoes. And it's really hard to do, honestly. Yeah. yeah, but I mean, yeah, we I mean we talked about a lot of that stuff yesterday too. If there's like one thing that you could say to like all the people that have. Mm -hmm you know, seeing your content, but I'm not saying like, Oh, say a All thank you. People. Say, Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, for no, I, I meant like, if there's one thing that you were like, man, like I feel really strongly about this and I feel like I just need to say this. It could be about anything. Like, it could be about very anything. Broad thing to ask. Yeah. Because um, I feel like sometimes as, as like mm -hmm. in the spot, like they, there's just certain things that I wish, you know, like, Oh man, I wish that player would say Why don't that. You but start he can. Oh, I, I guess. I and then I'll answer. That. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, let me think about something right now. Yeah. Uh, I mean, there's hard. a bunch of things. Like, there's a lot, right? There's a because lot of things. That's what I mean. It's like, there's so many times yeah. where like, you think like, man, I just wish I could say that, but I just want to like package that the right way or I want to find the right time to do it mm -hmm. or the right way to, to, and then it's just like, and then that opportunity comes and goes or you don't, or it never comes and you're just kind of like, you don't say it. So that's why I'm like, all right, well, what's, what's one thing that you would say? Um, you mean specific to like, Basketball and specific to YouTube? No, I mean, just, just in general. Anything. It could just be anything. I, I know, that's why it's pretty broad. It's super broad. What would you say? Let me sit here for what two hours. What would you hours? say to your streamers? <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, Dude, I, I didn't I, think through my questions. I'm like trying to, yeah, I was I trying to think through my podcast questions like right now, like <laughs> as he was talking and I was like, oh. I can man, only imagine tough. what questions you would come up with if you thought about them because <laughs> you got some no. good questions. Usually when we, when we end up, the thing I like when we end up like meeting up because we don't only... I mean, I used to sometimes fly out to like a game or something and we talk here and there, but like, because we only really text a lot, um, sometimes call, but uh, I only see you usually like once a year and it's yeah. off season, right? Because yeah. you're always traveling and stuff like that. Um, and we, we go through this, like the deep stuff all the time, <laughs> <laughs> like in like a that's short good. period of time. So yeah. we get those. Yeah. It's because we only get those opportunities. Maybe that's one thing. I mean, I think like. Maybe one thing that I've been learning as I get older, and I, I said this to Ryan yesterday too, and maybe that's something that I think would be cool to share is like, as I get older and older, I just realize like time is not unlimited. Life yeah. is not guaranteed. Mm -hmm. And like oftentimes like me and Ryan, when we were younger, it would just be like, dude, let's get together. Let's either like film a funny video, let's eat, and let's like game. <laughs> and we would just like play games. And then I was like, yeah. as we get older, it's like I definitely want to save time to do all that stuff but I also want to like be intentional about having deeper conversation and like get to some of the stuff that like, you know, cause there's things that we've talked about where I was like, Oh wow. Like I never envisioned us getting to that point where we were like actually talking about that. And it's like, that's one thing that I would encourage everybody and something that I've, I'm challenging myself with now is like when I get these opportunities to sit down with people, it's like, no, don't just be on your phone. Don't just like casually waste that time where like you can spend, sometimes you can live with a roommate and like, you not even realize it, but after like two, three months, it's just like, you haven't really gotten like, what is, how's he really doing? Or like, what's he struggling with? Or what are you struggling with? Or how right. can you support each other as friends or as brothers or sisters? Like I say that like, like, bro, like bros or like, you know, uh, metaphorical sisters or whatever. It's just like, how do you, how do you get to that next level of like caring for your friends? Maybe that's something that, that's something that I've yeah. kind of thought a good Is one. that, is that because I always thought like, for me, I think culturally, I think I don't know if it's an Asian thing or not, but like my parents, you know, we weren't open about talking to those kind of things. Um, I know that a lot of people, parents who are, yeah. um, but I just never, even with my brother, I don't share that kind of stuff. I know you guys are closer, but like, I don't know if it's an Asian thing or not, but I feel like culturally you don't really like for us, we usually, it's, it's almost the opposite. It's like kind of keep your own dirt to yourself. And there's certain thing. things that you shouldn't say yeah, or yeah. whatever. And it, yeah, no, I definitely agree that some of it is, is uh, definitely cultural. And then I think some of it is just like, uh, among all among all groups where it's just like they're just taboo certain things and sometimes it's like all it takes is a push mm -hmm. it's not even like there's a small wall but it can easily be knocked over if all you did was be like hey man i never really asked you this but like 
you know, whatever. How are you? How are you really doing? Like, are you? Are you like? How are you really doing? Are you pretty? Like, are you really fulfilled in what you're doing every day or yeah. in your work? Or whatever. Like, sometimes that's all it takes is a little push, and then it's like yeah. all of a sudden it's like, man, the guy has or girl has so many things to share, and it's like just because no one's ever pushed or or like gone to that territory, they've never mm-hmm. really had the opportunity to share. Well, there's your um, that's there's mine. your answer to to go and just talk, uh, be real with someone. Be Can real I pick with that? Someone. I'm trying to, trying to summarize. Can yeah. I pick that one too? Be real. Yeah. I pick that one. Okay. <laughs> I like the thing about no phones. I think that's like a pretty important relative to the times as well. It's like, mm-hmm. I mean, everyone always says that, like, you know, try to be in the moment and stuff like that. But it's a lot easier said than done, especially nowadays, you know, with so many things going on and it's all at the, you know, in your hand. And uh, I definitely like relate with that pretty. Heavily. And that's a, that's a rule that I put in now two months ago, two and a half months ago is like from now on, I have no phones at mealtime unless I really have to. So like sometimes I have to check because I have to make sure someone's okay or I'm planning like or after like there's certain things like do we have a ride or whatever, like or checking the time. But like mm-hmm. for the most part, it's like just get off your phone, man. Yeah. Just be present with the people that you're around. Yeah. All right. Your turn. Man, that to, was to like wrap a- it up. I was just going to use your answer. I was like, that's a really good one. We both pick it. Yeah. I just reiterated. I didn't even come up with anything. I know, man. I was like, a, I mean, I agree with that point. Um, and it's still relatively a new concept for me, you know? Like, yeah. we were talking about me it. Too. Like, I don't mean, yeah, I mean, I've been forcing myself, I guess, to like, you know, it's just, it's easy to say when someone's like, hey, how are you doing? You're like, I'm fine. Like, yeah. it's easy to like, oh, I'm good, dude. Like, you know, but it, you just got to push at it, I guess. Um, and just be open to just being open. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't want to take yours, but I mean, one thing to say to everybody, um, I think this is the same thing I've pushed a long time ago. And it's literally like finding out it's, it sounds cheesy, but it's finding out, you know, what you tr- what truly makes you happy versus what you think will make you happy. Um, and I, I feel like it's a I've gotten to a point where I didn't. I always thought like, oh, I, I want to create good content or whatever. And then I didn't realize, you know, along the journey, you know, in the back of my head, I'm still thinking like a part of me is like, well, I have to make a ton of money or I have to get to a certain level of fame. But you don't really realize it. And some people, maybe some people do, but I didn't really, re- you don't realize it for me. I didn't realize it until you kind of get to that point. Yeah. So you get to the point where you made more money than you ever thought you would or you make or you get become more famous than you ever thought you would, You're even more popular, whatever it is. Um, and until you get that and then you kind of realize, oh, that's it, you know, then that's not your end goal. And until you, I, I think not, you don't have to go through that. Right. But I think for me, that was almost like a depression point realizing like, wow, if I'm can't be happy with this then what's going to make me happy. Yeah. And I come into that realization of like, okay, yeah, I always said, this is my, what I would say is that, oh, it's, it makes me happy to create this kind of content. But really I was like thinking about, you know, other things as well. And until you really have those things and realize it's not, all, it's, it really isn't everything. Right. Yeah. And to, the, the issue is I know a lot of people are gonna be like, well, it's easy to say since you have it. But I mean, I, like, I'm just being completely honest. I think people need to find out. Um, and it's easier said than done. What truly makes you happy? Cause people can be happy with none of those things. Right. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's what we've bonded about is like, I mean, going through that insanity stretch, I've always kind of said like, Hey, there was an emptiness about it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was, it was happy. Like, it was happy circumstantially. It was awesome. And I was, you know, I was loving it. But I also knew that it wasn't enough. Like, it was still, like, empty in terms from a fulfillment standpoint. And I think that's, like, you don't always understand it until you have to get there. And it's, like, you could tell a kid, like, hey, you know, that thing's really hot. Don't touch it. But it's not until they actually, like, experience it. it, And then they're, like, whoa. Like, I know. And so, I mean, I definitely agree with that. And I think that's, like. I'm sorry. I'm gonna just piggyback off of that too because you just reminded me of something else. <laughs> you're good. Like, you hey, still got a little bit of time. You have to enjoy where you're at. You're mm-hmm. at and enjoy the journey and the moment of where you're at right now, even right. if it's not where you want to be. And also, like knowing that, like what That's you're saying easy, is like it's easier said than done. It's too. way yeah, easier it said than done. It's even saying like even when you do get a lot of what you think it is, like it won't always be what you like as fulfilling as you thought it was. And I think Mm -hmm. that's what you're talking about is like, and that's how we're all evolving and figuring out. And that's where like, we've had great conversation. That's for me, like always why I kind of go back to my faith in terms of just like grounding me and giving me like tremendous purpose and hope. But like, that's why going back to the full circle with your whole thing about the championship, it's like, dude, I'm going to enjoy it because one, I don't know if I'm ever going to, you know, be back here. Mm -hmm. And two, like, yeah, obviously I wish I could have, played and played more and played well and whatever, but like I'm going to enjoy where I'm at and, Mm -hmm. and like, 
I'm going to enjoy everything about it, even if it's not picture perfect. Yeah. And, see, d- and that's just to, um, huge. Like you, we have to get to that point where we're yeah. doing that. Otherwise, you waste all these opportunities and these like right. moments and like these years. And you realize at the end of it, you're like, man, where did it all go? Like, if I could go back, I wish I could just slow down and really soak that in and embrace it. Yeah. See, but the only scary part is this. Like I said, we don't have it. I don't have it figured out. The only scary part is, do you think having that mindset growing up, would you have pushed yourself? To, you know, because unhappy people, you go one or the other, you either sulk or you like get through it, right? Yeah. Would you have pushed yourself as hard as you did, you know, because you weren't satisfied with where you were? Like, and I, that's and the I, question. And, and that's a great question because I used, again, I used to think those things were mutually exclusive. Right. But now it's like, I don't, I actually think like, because I can tell you right now, I'm, and you can talk to my trainer. I've literally like, I'm so excited for next season. I'm so motivated for next season because like, I have so much fire and drive inside of me. I went through two straight years of injury. And then I had this first year where I just, you know, things weren't as great as I wanted it to be. I didn't play that well. And then I thought about it. It's like, man, that's true for everyone who comes off of like a major injury. It's like that first year is tough, mm-hmm. but that second year. And, and so for me, it's like, I have so much like motivation and excitement. And it's like, man, I want to be great. I want to be better. I know the ways I need to be better. I know how to, you know, rebuild my body. I went through the rough part of recovering from the injury. But at the same time, I'm completely like embracing and enjoying <laughs> where I'm at right now. Which yeah. is why I'm saying that's a right? hard thing to do. And it's hard, some people, but it's possible. Yeah, some people might take it another way, right? Oh, you know what? I'm not in a good spot, but I got to make myself be happy about it. Yeah. Like, that's not what we're trying to say. It, there's a balance there, right? Yeah, and it's like, I'm not going to let anybody take this moment away from me, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to work any less hard than I would have right. in the past. Exactly. Yeah. Right? right, and and so that work ethic will stay the same, but I'll also be much more enjoying sane it in, in my process, Yeah, and yeah. it's just like, I'm just like, and that's why for me, it's like, dude, I can like, it's like, I'm gonna come on your podcast or I'm let's, let's go eat or whatever. It's like, it's whatever. It's just to me, I'm just like in a place where I just like, I'm loving life. Like I want to be around my friends, like, and like, and then I equally like super excited to like, I literally don't even, sometimes don't even want to take a vacation. I want to go straight to training I know, and right? I know that's super unhealthy. So I'm going to, you know, get fat for two weeks, but like, <laughs> you know, yeah, but it's only, but again, weeks. it's like, you can be both, mm-hmm. both in both of those places yeah. at the same time. And with that very great advice from Jeremy. <laughs> and all the great uh, questions. No, 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 that everything. was good. You framed it better than, I mean, you clearly have said this before because <laughs> it's like well-spoken. Um, you need to catch a flight to Toronto. I got to go. And you, when is the parade? The parade is Monday. Monday. And it is Saturday right now. Yeah. So I think tomorrow we're going to go back. Okay. Get situated and then get, get this parade. All right. I mean, well, I'm going to say it. I want, a, I want a Jeremy Lin podcast. <laughs> you, are, you got good questions. You got insightful answers. You know what would be fun? You know what would be fun too. is if we if we were both able to lead a podcast. That'd be fun. If we talk to a third a person. Sports, yeah, bring in the sports. That'd be cool. That'd be All right, let's do it. You don't have to convince me. You have time. You know what? I'm, I'm retiring. <laughs> I, love, I love that. We, <laughs> I, we should have got Kev on here too oh, because Kev be is fun. really like into sports too. Yeah. Yeah. We, we were talking about we we're going to surprise you if there was a game seven and go out there. And then we looked at the ticket prices and we're like, oh, <laughs> maybe we'll just text him. <laughs> <laughs> ticket prices were crazy. All right. Yeah. Well, again, um, thank you so much for Jeremy Lynn to being for being here on thank the you, podcast. Jeremy. We have to get him to the airport real quick. So we're going to close this out. You can follow us at off the pill on Twitter, off the pill podcast on Instagram. Find Jeremy at Jalen seven. Jalen seven. Yeah. I don't know if you're promoting your Twitter or your Instagram or whatever. But and by the way, <laughs> I'm not even joking. This is really, really good. Thank you. <laughs> this is my I first time I came over. This is really, really good. It's like I described it as I like told him he didn't have energy. To. Yeah, you, you actually told me you like prefer, probably prefer me not to do this, but I don't care. It's really good. All right. Well, thank you, man. Um, yes, Ninja Milk. He's actually drinking it. It makes us look good. So NinjaMilk.com. <laughs> um, with that being said, uh, we'll talk to you next podcast. See you guys. Cool. This is how we end it. Just breathe into the mic in three, two, one. <gasps> You're a pro, dude. See, that's what happens when you're a professional. Peace.